Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Thank you so much for clicking on the second video I'm posting tonight. I appreciate you being here. I'm very excited because I'm going home tomorrow and if you have been watching my videos, you know that I have been uh, MIA, if you will, from my real life for a bit. I have been traveling and I will be going to Japan. I'm actually going to be in Japan this day next week, which is crazy to think about. Um, I spent the last month doing a little bit of traveling and I vlogged in each place. Uh, the vlogs for Europe are done now. There's a playlist on my YouTube channel if you want to go and look. They're right there. I had so much fun. I just uploaded the Lisbon one. However, tomorrow I'm going back home to Ireland for the first time in a month and a bit. <laughs> And I'm going to be seeing my dogs for the first time in a good few weeks. And this is the longest time period I've ever been away from my dogs. And I'm very excited for seeing my girls tomorrow. So once I finish this video, I am hopping into that bed and I am sleeping until I wake up for my flight. And we are going and we are seeing the girls tomorrow. I'm very, very, very excited. So anyway, I'm just in a good mood. I'm excited. So, um, we've been talking, like, you know, about Jason Nash. We've been keeping up to date with everything. I just posted one, um, a couple hours ago about that he got swatted, and I'm very, very, very against that. Uh, I did see, however, that I was watching the Just Trish podcast, and they started talking about David Dobrik and Jason Nash. They don't name Jason, which is funny, because they name everyone else, basically, um, but... They talk about David Dobrik, and this is a video that I saw in which David Dobrik on his Snapchat story, by the way, that is what David Dobrik does for his career now. He is a Snapchat creator, whatever that means. He is this new wave of influencer that Snapchat pay, what I've heard is millions, millions of dollars for to basically Snapchat everything you do in a day. If you have Snapchat, raise your hand, me. Do you ever go on it and you're seeing your friend's stories and then below it you'll see like Josh Peck, David Dobrik, and the thumbnail will always be like a sexy girl or a sexy guy or crazy activity or something, right? Because what they do is they spend all day Snapchatting because there's ads that get played in between the Snapchats and they make tons of money from it. But they will always put the last Snapchat as a clickbait so that that pops up as the thumbnail so then you click on it and they make more money. Now, in one of these recently, David went over to Jason's house and basically made a joke at Jason's expense of him basically being like unemployed. He made a joke and a couple jabs at the fact that you haven't been on TikTok live for a few hours and basically honing in on this thing that's been going on between Jason and David where David's making fun of Jason for, you know, not really being able to have a job anymore that's not literally just begging for money on TikTok Live. And then we're hearing Jason Nash be annoyed at David Dobrik because he's refusing to take like 50 million deal or whatever it was, Spotify deals to do a podcast with Jason because David doesn't want to work with him anymore. So then Jason's losing a lot of money. I already said my point that I don't like either of these people, but Jason Nash's inability to have a career or job that doesn't involve David Dobrik is crazy to me. Um, so... This back and forth of David and Jason making, well, it's not really a back and forth, it's David making fun of Jason and Jason just accepting it, which has basically been Jason's life for the past couple of years, well, last a lot of years that he's known um, David. By the way, I just saw something happen on the screen and this makes me laugh every time. So there's like dust floating, as you can see, right? I'm in a hotel room, there's like dust floating. Like that was literally a piece of dust. I know that someone is gonna comment and be like, at, at four minutes, there was an orb. And someone was like, Adam, there's spirits around you. There's an orb. I looked at one of the recent ones that people said, I was like, bitch, that is a piece of dust. <laughs> All love to my spiritual girls out there. I love a bit of spiritualness, but <laughs> sometimes it's just dust. <laughs> Maybe there are. Hey, guys. Hey, how y'all doing? So Trisha talked about it. Oscar talked about it. I stopped listening when they started getting into it and I was like, I'm going to come on here, be mother mucker with my little muckers and we're going to talk about it. I haven't seen Trisha Paytas talk about Jason Nash in a very long time. It's also a very big deal that Trisha Paytas has this thriving podcast, thriving career and Jason Nash is now begging for money because for a long time, Trisha Paytas was the one that was not well off and it was Jason Nash. However, how the tables have turned... Let's get to it. 
I think it might have been a Snapchat or something where he David. was like making fun of the TikTok lives of it all. <gasps> um, David did? Yeah. Because I seen, I saw Zane and Heath talk about it and Zane was talking about how he tipped someone $20 that was in their friend group. Yeah, I did see that too. And they were like laughing about it. Like, oh my God, like he was so excited for the $20 galaxy. And I was like, this is like your friend. I know. Like, so I'll say the okay. name. This will be off the cut. Uh, but he went to d house and was like, I'm going to go over to I wonder what name that was. I wonder what name... J <laughs> I wonder what name they're saying there. <laughs> so stupid. His house and see if he's still doing the live. Isn't that so terrible? But maybe they plan that. Like, I could imagine him being like, oh, this will get me publicity and people over. Because, like, if David has an, a million people on his Snapchat, more people go it to the live. It mean, though, because then he was like, oh, I thought you were a it seemed oh, very like oh, yeah. oh oh okay oh my god so dark this got that was the darkest part of this whole show oh my god um yikes and you know what's even like sadder about it is like again i don't really judge that kind of thing i'm like yeah well however you want to make money okay you got to make it but it is kind of sad like the humiliation of all just with trisha goes i'm not gonna judge jason nash but the humiliation of it all it must be such a vindicating moment for Trisha because Jason and David really made her out to be a crazy person. And I would say that Trisha, out of all three of them, is the one with the thriving career now. Obviously, with Trisha, the career is so temperamental. But it must be such a oof moment from Trisha where she's like, lol, fuck y'all, fuck y'all. With the vlog squad and David in general, it just goes back to ev like all of this, right? Everyone's like, David's been quiet or changed or whatever. It's like... It's really about humiliation at the end of the day. It's very, and that's why I say him and Mr. Beast are very much like, you know what I mean? It's like disguised as like something good or goofy or funny or entertaining, but it's like also like goofy. degrading, you know, and kind of like making fun of. It, it gave off very much like. I also think David and Jason's relationship has been David degrading him, I think for the longest time. You know, their full dynamic is the fact that David's the young one, but yet he has all the power. David's the young one. He has all the money. Dave and Jason's really fed into it. However, as time has gone on and Jason's la made less and less money because David doesn't want to work with him anymore, the jokes still happen, but they're kind of like, ooh, because they actually apply now. Like, you're making fun of him for being broke or you're making fun of him for whatever. Whereas when you did that a couple years ago, you were making him millions of dollars and he had all these houses and stuff, but you're not working with him anymore. So he, you're making jokes about him and he's very well off still, by the way. I mean, we're dealing with someone being like, I'm purr and you're like living in a million dollar house and million dollar cars and your children are going to private school and all this fucking like, so like context, but purr for vlog squad standards. I mean, probably still making fucking millions. Actually, I don't think Jason Nash is making millions. Like, David's vlog stays, you know? Yeah. And, like, Rami, and I think now you just see everything in a new light. So before, um, yeah. like, as a viewer, former viewer of the vlogs. Former fan you were. Yeah. Stan. I, that, I'll come back to the other point that I was going to. Trisha said, you weren't a viewer, babe. You were a fan. <laughs> make, but anyway, for this one in particular, <laughs> it just brought me back to, like, those early days. And, like, how maybe the audience would have thought that was funny if this was back, like, 2019, 2018 or whatever, but now no, after like seeing everything, sad. it was kind of sad. I was yeah. like, a little dark. I mean, the jokes really aren't going to hit with David, you know, making fun of Jason's financial status whenever Jason is literally being like, give me money on TikTok. Like, we're all like, how do we respond to that? Like, the joke's not funny. Like, there's no comedic value to it. It's not that we care about Jason Nash's financial status, but it's like, how are we supposed to respond to this? Like, I don't know. I, I think just like, seeing friends making, and I, like, again, they're all going to say they're bros and these are jokes and these are friends. And that's, because that was always their guys. It's like, this is what friends do. Like, we, like, I was going to say jerk each other off, but it's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what is the word? Like, time and place. We <laughs> joke around. What is no, it? To quote a very, very, very intelligent woman, time and place. And you did it on the Just Trish podcast at IR2. What the fuck? Right, you're right. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I feel like that's I don't what I want to say, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and they use that, guys. That's and crazy. It's just toxic. It's just toxic. And is it worth? Is it worth a galaxy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it worth? <laughs> you know? And again, I don't. I literally like you could be like an actual panhandler on the street, and I won't judge. I'll be like, if that's what it's come down to, okay. I don't like to when people shame though. When it's like, well, what else? Like, should I be doing? When they're like, should I be working at fast food or whatever? I'm just using an example. That's not with it. Then, my favorite thing is that Trisha has probably watched all the videos on Jason Ash. I think this was whenever he was like, 
I'm not going to get a job at Lululemon. So Trisha's referring to that when she's like, I'm not going to get a job at whatever she just said. Um, so they may not say Jason Nash's name, but don't you worry. Trisha Paytas is still consuming all Jason Nash content. Yeah, I think it was Lululemon or something. But I love that she's <laughs> alluding to, like, not watching the videos, but is exactly saying a statement of something that happened. But, yeah, we don't know who it is that we're still talking about. We said, but, like, it's like, well, someone did say it, whatever. Anyways, and it's, like, shaming, like, oh, should I be working at, like, Lululemon or something? It was, like, <laughs> and someone was she just said the exact one. Oh, she loves a bit of Jason Nash content. <laughs> Girl, you should have been like, you shouldn't have said Lululemon. You should have said one that they didn't say. Because now we're like, okay, now you're watching the Jason Nash videos. It's like, well, yeah, What's like that's, that? yeah. <laughs> it's like, so now you're like talking down to that person as if the person at Lululemon's like below you. So I just don't like that when it's like, totally. well, this is my only option. And like, I'm not going to go work out Lulu, like McDonald's or something. It's just like, well, like. I that's a little more respectable. In yeah, my opinion, I but. mean, you know, I just, the whole thing. And, but back to the David thing, I just feel like that's what he does. And, but shame. I think shame on him for real. Like it's not, it's not his fault. This person, like people. She goes shame. Well, 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 yes, shame on him. She had to think about it. You know what? Her and Jason go way back, and her and David go way back. So I don't fucking blame. Are at that like again, and we also don't know. By the way, it's like panhandlers like that get into a Mercedes, right? You see people on the street, and then they like go around to the Mercedes. That's also what I was thinking yeah. too. I was like, let's put broke into perspective, you yeah, know? Yeah, because I'm like, the house is still housing. Like it's the still house a is nice still house. You're you know? still getting nice things. You're doing nice things, like perspective you yeah. know and i don't but i also don't like that either and just in general and that's why i always try to reiterate like i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine because it's like yes i have there's been money issues and you know i've lost money and there's been debt and all stuff like that but i always reiterate like i'm fine like i own a house like it's nice i live you know whatever i think when people just say you know they try to tug on people's heartstrings you know it's like well i have this baby and if i don't do this you know whatever you know it's just like that's a little bit uh, yeah well i mean that's exactly what he's doing he's he literally it's so weird because he's like i'm broke I, you know, can't afford to bring my kids to school. And I have to bring them to private school, which, by the way, is a privilege, number one. But then number two, it's like, you're currently filming these TikTok lives from your mansion. You're filming, driving around in your very expensive cars. So what Trisha's saying is such a valid point. Broke to us is not broke to them. So, I don't know how you want me to respond to that. Would David Dobrik really be making fun of Jason at the level he is if Jason Nash was broke? Probably. Well, probably, actually. He's kind of evil. Probably not. So, context. Yeah, a little manipulative and a little... So, you know, just don't, just go get your coin. And it may, you know, sometimes they say, what do they say? Like sometimes the people on the street um, make like $1,000 a day, you yeah. know what I mean? So I don't know, I, I don't know. knock it, but at the <laughs> same time, like maybe they're doing fine and we're just all being taken for something. And the more people that talk about it. So maybe I, if I'm giving benefit of the doubt, why am I giving benefit of the doubt to these people? If I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt, maybe it was set up where David's like, I'm going to come promote you because <laughs> it's that's not how working. you make money. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> some people, and some people, can I tell you, some people like actually like humiliation. Like, you know what I mean? Like they, yeah. they like, Girl. they love it. Then they're like, give me more of that. You know, I think that's why there's dominatrixes and everything like that. Yeah, and humiliation kink. For sure. So maybe some people. Not them saying Jason Nash has a humiliation kink. <laughs> like. I just like being degraded, but more like in the bedroom, not like in yeah, real life. life. <laughs> yeah, I don't like being degraded now. But some people like it. I'm sure Taylor Swift does not. She has not given the same. I'm sure she doesn't. But I'm sure some of these people don't mind a little publicity for their lives. Now, the point I was going to make before is I had it like in my Instagram highlights. People kept posting them because I had like all my interviews with like the vlog squad and stuff and being oh. at the Scotty Sire's house with like oh. the mural and stuff. So I had it. I have clearly the, the house? highlights. Yes, I interviewed them at Wait, the house. Wait, what? That's so random. I didn't yeah. know that. Wow. I was really boots on the ground oh for a vlog squad. What, how did that even happen? They like, come to the house? Yeah. Do you, like, did you usually there. do that? Yeah. I feel like you never came to my house. <laughs> I always, always went to the studio. the studio. Yeah. The studio was right down the street from them. Why did yeah. they just not go to the studio? <laughs> they were literally like two minutes from like there. It was like at home with the vlog squad video, like segment. And you're whatever. interviewing them? Yeah. Oh, did yeah. you get any 
groundbreaking news. Probably not. Scotty had a song or something, I'm sure. And what did you say? I, would love, I need to go react to that. I want to see the interview. Are you just like, funny. I'm such a fan. This is such a good song. Like, <laughs> wow, you really get me. I'm also sad. <laughs> probably, actually. Not the Scotty Sire sad music. Listen, I love a bit of Lana Del Rey music. Actually, the door Lana Del Rey music. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think that there's something so full circle about watching Trisha Paytas be able to, like, talk down to David and Jason. It's so f- full circle because it's been a long time coming. Like, even at the time when she was doing Frenemies, like, they were still really popular. Whereas now, nobody's checking in on these people, but people are checking in on Trisha. Let me know your opinion. Let's talk about it down below. I appreciate you being here, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.